Welcome fellow Toastmasters. The annual business meeting adjourned at 2.15 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time on August 29, 2020 with the conclusion of the electronic voting. I'm now privileged to share with you the results of the electronic ballots for the 2020 annual business meeting. I will start with the results for proposals A and B. Then I will announce the results of the international officer and director elections in the order they appeared on the ballot. Space on the back of the annual business meeting agenda was provided for you to record these results. The results will also be posted on the Toastmasters International website at the conclusion of this event. I have the results for Proposal A. Total votes cast 20,999. Necessary for adoption, two thirds, 14,000. Yes, 10,678. No, 10,321. Invalid votes, zero. Since a two thirds vote is not attained, Proposal A is lost. I have the results for Proposal B. Total votes cast 20,701. Necessary for adoption two thirds, 13,801. Yes, 19,964. No, 737. Invalid votes, zero. Since a two thirds vote is attained, proposal B is adopted. As announced during the annual business meeting on August 28, 2020, congratulations to distinguished Toastmaster Margaret Page, your newly elected international president elect. And congratulations to distinguished Toastmaster Mac Kinsey, your newly elected first vice president. I will now move on to the results for the international officer and director elections. As with the in-person meeting, each candidate appointed an observer who watched the tabulating and verification of the results. For each election, I will read the results of the first ballot. For those elections for which no candidate received the majority of the total votes cast on the first ballot, preferential voting was used to determine who was elected. For the results of the preferential voting ballot, the candidate with the lowest number of votes on the first ballot was removed from consideration. Votes cast for this candidate as first preference were redistributed to the remaining candidates based on the second preference of those voting delegates who had ranked the removed candidate first. The candidate who received the majority of the total votes cast after redistribution is declared elected. There were some voting delegates who did not indicate a preference on the preferential ballot. These have been designated as unexercised votes in the preferential ballot results. This accounts for the difference in total votes cast between the first ballot and the preferential ballot. In the event of a tie in any election, that election will be decided by lot. I have for you the results for second vice president. Total votes cast 21,378. Necessary for election majority 10,690. Donald F. Bittick 4,117. Murag Matheson. 10,497. 
Radhi Spear, 6,764. Invalid votes, zero. There is no election. As a candidate, as no candidate received a majority of the total votes cast, the office of second vice president was determined by preferential voting. For the results of the preferential voting ballot, <coughs> excuse me. For the results of the preferential voting ballot, the candidate with the lowest number of votes on the first ballot was removed from consideration. Votes cast for this candidate as first preference were redistributed to the remaining candidates based on the second preference of those voting delegates who had ranked the removed candidate first. The candidate who received the majority of the total votes cast after redistribution is declared elected. The results of the preferential voting ballot are total votes cast 20,295. Necessary for election majority 10,148. Murad Matheson 13,052. Radhi Spear 7,243. Invalid votes zero. Unexercised votes, 1,083. I declare elected for second vice president, distinguished Toastmaster Morag Matheson. <laughs> I will now move on to the elections for the international director position. I have the results for international director from region two. Total votes cast, 21,353. Necessary for election, majority, 10,677. Todd Henry, 5,126. Karen Murray Lucas, 16,227. Invalid votes, zero. I declare elected as international director from region two, distinguished Toastmaster, Karen Marie Lucas. I now have the results for international director from region four. Total votes cast 21,164. Necessary for election, majority, 10,583. Robert Christensen, 6,222. Harold Osmundson, 8,690. Linda M. Ray, 6,252. Invalid votes, zero. There is no election as no candidate received the majority of the total votes cast. The Office of International Director from Region 4 was determined by preferential voting. For the results of the preferential voting ballot, the candidate with the lowest number of votes on the first ballot was removed from consideration. <coughs> <coughs> I'm going to pause for a minute. Give me a minute, please. Thank you. For the results of the preferential voting ballot, the candidate with the lowest number of votes on the first ballot was removed from consideration. 
votes cast for this candidate as first preference were redistributed to the remaining candidates based on the second preference of those voting delegates who had ranked the removed candidate first the candidate who received the majority of the total votes cast after redistribution is declared elected the results of the preferential voting ballot are total votes cast 20003 necessary for election majority 10002 harold osmundson 11906 linda m ray 8097 invalid votes 0 unexercised votes 1161 i declare elected for international director from region 4 Distinguished Toastmaster Harold Osmundson. I have the results for International Director from Region Six. Total votes cast: twenty-one thousand three hundred and two. Necessary for election majority: ten thousand six hundred and fifty-two. Avis C. Brody. 2506 Melissa L McGavick 18796 invalid votes 0 I declare elected as international director from region 6 distinguished toastmaster Melissa L McGavick I have the results for international director from region 8 total votes cast 21235 necessary for election majority 10618 shirley e daily 4412 roy ganga 13616 Rebecca Ann McGilton 3207 invalid votes 0 I declare elected for international director from region 8 distinguished toastmaster Roy Ganga I now have for you the results for international director from Region ten. Total votes cast twenty thousand eight hundred and twenty nine. Necessary for election majority ten thousand four hundred and fifteen. Pedro Casias four thousand six hundred and forty five. Elizabeth Nostad ten thousand one hundred and ninety. Patricia O'Reilly. 5994 invalid votes 0 there is no election as no candidate received the majority of the total votes cast the office of international director from region 10 was determined by preferential voting for the results of the preferential voting ballot the candidate with the lowest number of votes on the first ballot was removed from consideration votes cast for this candidate as first preference were redistributed to the remaining candidates based on the second preference of those voting delegates who had ranked the removed candidate first the candidate who received the majority of the total votes cast after redistribution is declared elected the results of the preferential voting ballot are total votes cast 20385 necessary for election majority 10193 elizabeth nostad 13438 patricia o'reilly 6947 invalid votes 0 unexercised votes 444 i declare elected for international director from region 10 distinguished toastmaster elizabeth nostad
I now have the results for international director from region 12. Total votes cast, 21,212. Necessary for election majority, 10,607. Leslie Storkey, 13,425. Jan Vecchio, 7,787. Invalid votes, zero. I declare elected as international director from region 12, distinguished Toastmaster, Leslie Storkey. I now have the results for international director from region 14. Total votes cast, 21,206. Necessary for election majority, 10,604. Dorothy Isa C. Du, 12,041. Leva Van, 9,165. Invalid votes, zero. I declare elected as international director from Region 14, Distinguished Toastmaster, Dorothy Isa C. Du. Congratulations to all our newly elected international officers and directors. Thank you to all the voting delegates who submitted their ballots. I would also like to thank Supervising Director Brahinsky and the observers who helped with the validation of these results. And a special thank you to our credentials committee, led by past international president, Gary Schmidt, and professional registered parliamentarian, Dan Jackson, for their support behind the scenes. I am indebted to the staff at World Headquarters, especially Mona Shah and Kristen Kiryasis, who have worked round the clock in planning, implementing, and coordinating the credentials process, the annual business meeting, and the election results. And now they can finally get time to sleep. As I mentioned before, we had to implement some procedural changes due to the COVID-19 pandemic. If you still have questions, please feel free to email board contact at toastmasters.org. I repeat, board contact at toastmasters Dot org. I would now like to introduce our Toastmaster of the evening, our caring, compassionate, and charismatic immediate past international president, the golden lady of Toastmasters, distinguished Toastmaster, Lark Dolly.
Thank you, Mr. Courageous 2019-2020 Toastmasters International President Deepak Menon. Welcome Toastmasters from around the world to this prestigious and unprecedented global online event. The first virtual inauguration of our Toastmasters Board of Directors, including the installation of the 2020-2021 International Officers and Directors. During this event, we will have the privilege to hear from our newly elected second vice president, our outgoing 2019-2020 International President, and our incoming 2020-2021 International President. Let's begin this inauguration by inviting past international president, distinguished Toastmaster Chris Ford to deliver our inspiration. To lead in good times is easy. Okay, relatively easy, but to lead in tough times when the status quo is challenged every day when things we took for granted are merely distant memories, when just the thought of returning to normal is more wishful thinking than reality, that's where leaders are made. Fellow Toastmasters, we have before us today a new leadership team that we have elected and in whom we have placed our trust to guide us through tough times ahead. As a sailor, I think metaphorically about setting out from the safety of home port for a new destination. But to paraphrase 2014 world champion, Dananjaya Hetiarachi, we don't know what it is. This is truly a test of leadership, navigating turbulent and uncharted waters to an uncertain destination. To outgoing President Deepak and the 2019-2020 Board of Directors, you have admirably brought us this far and we thank you. It is now up to our newly elected President Richard and the new Board of Directors to continue the adventure. As for the rest of us, we have a trip made. Take it easy as passengers or sign on as crew. In short, we can go along for the ride or be part of the solution. I, for one, will sign on as crew. How about you? Ladies and gentlemen, whether you're a sailor or a sailor wannabe, we all need to pull together to support our new leadership team in guiding us towards new horizons. Together, we will weather this storm. And you know what? There's always calmer seas on the other side. Thank you, past international president Ford. I love your nautical theme and I will join you as a part of the crew. You may have to teach me though, because I've never sailed. This past week has been historic, as has been this past year. I thought I led our organization during a year of change in 2018, 2019. How little did I understand the definition of the word change then. But our organization has risen to the challenge of the global pandemic. COVID has challenged us to be creative, to be innovative, to be agile. We have found the golden lining in the pandemic cloud. Since March, we have met every COVID challenge within our organization at each level. I want to personally thank every member, every club leader, every district leader, every regional leader, our international board of directors, our Captain Courageous President, our stalwart CEO, and every member of the World Headquarters staff, all who have risen to the challenges of our new world. We have over 60,000 members and guests registered for this convention. Talk about a golden lining and a pandemic cloud. And I hope 
that all the first timers at this convention will become multi-timers in our future. When we are all together face to face at our inaugural celebrations, we begin with the entrance of the past presidents into the convention hall. Those who have led us throughout our history. Today, we acknowledge them virtually, distinguished Toastmasters all. George C. Scott, William D. Hamilton, Eddie V. Dunn, John A. Falwell, Tommy B. Richardson, John F. Noonan, A. Edward Bick, John W. Gillespie, Benny E. Bow, Neil R. Wilkinson, Pauline Shirley, Ian B. Edwards, Lynn W. Jury, Terry R. Daly, Tim R. Keck, Alfred R. Hertzing, Gavin Blakey, Ted Corcoran, John R. Greiner, Dilip Abesekera, Johnny T. Uy, Chris K. Ford, Jana B. Barnhill, Gary Schmidt. Pat L. Johnson, Michael Nataro, John Lau, George Yen, Mohammed Murad, Jim Kakachi, Mike Storkey, Balraj Arunasalam. We are truly privileged to have so many past presidents who continue to actively support our organization at every level. At the international level, they serve as committee members and committee chairs, working group members and working group chairs. We thank them for their continued service, their continued leadership, and their continued mentorship in our organization. Let's give all our past international presidents a virtual round of applause. And now, please acknowledge your continuing international directors, distinguished Toastmasters all. Region one, from Seattle, Washington, United States, Naomi. Takeuchi. Region three from Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States, TK Ogiri. Region five from Kenner, Louisiana, United States, Mohammed A. Kayum. Region seven from Richmond, Virginia, United States, Saul Assad. Region nine from Weymouth, Massachusetts, United States, Stefano S. McGee. Region 11, from Cape Town, South Africa, Aletta Rocha. Region 13, from Bengaluru, Karnataka, India, Suda Balaji. Let's give our continuing international directors a virtual round of applause. Now let's thank our outgoing international directors, distinguished Toastmasters all. Region two from Los Angeles, California, United States, Joan T. Lewis. Region four from Plymouth, Minnesota, United States, Larry Merrick. Region six from East Lansing, Michigan, United States, Carol Prohinsky. Region eight from Nassau, New Providence, Bahamas, 
Anthony J. Longley. Region 10 from Helsinki, Finland, Tuire Vuelasvirta. Region 12 from Littleton, New Zealand, David Templeman. Region 14 from Shanghai, China, Susan Zhou. And now let's give our outgoing international directors a virtual round of applause. Are you ready for your newly elected international directors? Well, join me in welcoming the newly elected international directors, distinguished hostmasters all. Region two, from San Marino, California, United States, Karen Marie Lucas. Region four, from New Hope, Minnesota, United States, Harold Osmondson. Region six, from Cranberry Township, Pennsylvania, United States, Melissa L. McGavick. Region eight, from Milton, Georgia, United States, Roy Ganga. Region 10 from Vestra Freolunda, Sweden, Elizabeth Nosted. Region 12 from the Sunshine Coast, Queensland, Australia, Leslie Storkey. Region 14 from Davos City, Philippines, Dorothy Isa C. Du. And now let's give our newly elected international directors a virtual round of applause. It is my golden honor now to introduce the Toastmasters International Executive Committee. Chief Executive Officer from Inglewood, Colorado, United States, Daniel Rex. Second Vice President from Mürendorf, Bavaria, Germany, Distinguished Toastmaster, Morag Matheson. First Vice President from Coral Springs, Florida, United States, Distinguished Toastmaster, Matt Kinsey. International President-Elect from Delta, British Columbia, Canada, Distinguished Toastmaster, Margaret Page. 2019-2020 International President from New Delhi, India, Distinguished Toastmaster, Deepak Menon. 2020-2021 International President from Seymour, Connecticut, United States, Distinguished Toastmaster Richard E. Peck. And now let's give our International Executive Committee a virtual round of applause. Serving on the Board of Directors is a rewarding opportunity, a tremendous responsibility, and a gratifying experience. It begins here with the ceremonial installation. During this process, we recognize the completion of the responsibilities of the outgoing international officers and directors. Then the newly elected international officers and directors accept their responsibilities to uphold our core values, our mission statements, and to perform the duties of their role to the best of their abilities. Today, virtually, we officially induct our newly elected international officers and directors and pledge to support them. But first, let's thank our outgoing international officers and directors for their service and hard work. To all our outgoing international directors and officers, we are incredibly grateful for your contributions 
and the fulfillment of your responsibilities throughout your term of office. We express our gratitude for your service during what we now call normal times and during the challenging times of the global pandemic. You are released from your 2019-2020 International Officer and Director responsibilities, but you are not released from your duties as past leaders in this organization. You are to continue to support this organization. And as Chris Ford said, be a part of the crew. I know you will as I will. Let's show our virtual appreciation one last time for our outgoing international officers and directors. Now, traditionally at this time, I would invite the newly elected international officers and directors to pledge that they will fulfill the responsibilities of their role for their term of office and that they will adhere to our core values and support the missions of our organization. At this time, I would also invite the outgoing international officers and directors to exchange pins with the incoming officers and directors. Obviously in this virtual environment, we cannot physically do this, but you're not off the hook. I expect that the first opportunity for these two boards to meet face to face, they will exchange their pins. And by the way, I have one to exchange as well. Until then, I am truly honored to present to our worldwide membership, the 2020-2021 International Board of Directors Please give them a virtual round of applause. Now, would you like to hear from your newly elected second vice president? I would. So let's welcome newly elected second vice president, distinguished hostmaster, Morag Matheson. International President, fellow Toastmasters, thank you. Thank you for electing me and entrusting me to be second Vice President. I look forward to serving with sincerity, courage and compassion. There are many people to whom I'm thankful today. Firstly, to my husband David, thank you for being willing to eat dinner alone and go to bed alone again. The love that we share for Toastmasters and the joy that we find in serving is something very special between us. To my campaign team, led by past International Director Mary Morrison and past District Director Luann Kent, Mondays will never be the same again. To the whole team, thank you for sharing your perspectives, for your support and your encouragement, which you gave so freely. To Don Vidic and Raddy Spear, thank you for running this race with me and for all that you have contributed to my personal development. I wish you success for what lies ahead. To all of the international director candidates, thank you for taking your courage in both hands and stepping up. I trust this will just be one station on your journey of personal development. Finally, thank you to Ken Fields. You probably don't know him. He invited me to Toastmasters and I will always be grateful for that. He sowed a seed without knowing whether it would bear fruit. I invite us all to sow seed that makes a difference and changes our world. Thank you. Golden congratulations, newly elected second vice president, Morag Matheson. Congratulations. 
What a golden honor it has been for me to serve my final year on the board alongside Captain Courageous. Our 2019-2020 Toastmasters International President. Who could have ever predicted what a tumultuous year it would have been? I remember in August of 2019, I wished our 2019-2020 International President a year of stabilization, a year without any major changes, a year of growth. And until the pandemic struck our world, it was a year of stabilization. It was a year of growth. Then the world changed. It seemed like overnight. I flew from Austin, Texas to Denver, Colorado for our executive committee meeting in March, followed by our board meeting. I flew on a full plane from Austin to Denver. That was on March the 8th, 2020. Within a week, the world spiraled into the pandemic. Our board meeting began on March 13th and it was a hybrid board meeting. We had 11 board members face-to-face -face on site and we had eight board members virtually accessing the board meeting. Our international president has become known for his compassion, his confidence, his calm demeanor, and to me, for his incredible courage. He has faced every challenge with calm resolve. I will continue to be a member of this organization for the rest of my life and to serve whenever I am needed. Today, it is my most golden honor to yield the title of immediate past international president to none other than Deepak Menon. Deepak, please address the members of our organization who have been motivated and inspired by you since 2002, but especially this year as you led our organization with humility and courage. Thank you, Golden Lady of Toastmasters, for your kind remarks. Our possibilities become limitless when we unshackle ourselves from our self-doubts and give free reign to our imagination. Greetings, fellow Toastmasters and most welcome guests. Just about a year ago, addressing you on the occasion of my inauguration as international president, I had urged that we shrug off the past and emerge from our comfort zones. I suggested that it was time to be imaginative and innovative while serving our members. This year has been the most unusual in our 96 years history. In the face of adversity, we have been the most innovative in the way we have tackled the pandemic and emerged from its challenges with courage and fortitude. We have embraced new ways of engaging with our members, learned new skills, and continued growing as communicators and leaders. All that I have learned in Toastmasters in these past 18 years as a member came to my aid as I served this year as your international president. In addition to communication and leadership skills, Toastmasters teaches us life skills. These competencies provided me with an arsenal of effective tools in dealing with these uncertain times. I was blessed to have the support of a strong board of directors who acted with agility and boldness, coupled with compassion. My predecessor, immediate past international president, Lark Doli, continued to be golden in her support and mentorship. Together with international president-elect, and now International President Richard Peck, First Vice President Margaret Page, 
and second vice president Matt Kinsey, they were there with me to monitor the situation and act with swiftness almost on a daily basis. Chief Executive Officer Daniel Rex has been the mentor to many international presidents, and I'm no exception. All through this year, Dan provided the benefit of his sagacity and foresight to the board of directors and to me in the tough decisions that we were required to take. Dan has provided unparalleled leadership to the organization in this time of crisis. Our world headquarters staff has been steadfast in its support of the organization. Putting aside their personal needs, they have worked tirelessly for more hours than ever before in our time of necessity. They have helped transform the decisions of the board into reality and made sure that the wheels of our organization kept rolling. Our 2019-2020 region advisors were my strength as they worked diligently with the district leaders across the world. When the pandemic struck us, they provided a sea of calm in the stormy turbulence to whom the district leaders could turn to for advice, counseling, and mentoring. I'm grateful to my wife, Kavita, and my daughters, Rajita and Ramita, who have been a source of inspiration and encouragement and have provided me much needed sustenance all through my time in Toastmasters, and especially in this past one year. Many have asked me, what was the opportunity I most missed in this unique year while serving as international president? What I have missed is visiting with many of you in person, as I was scheduled to in the months of April and May 2020. But then, as they say, every cloud comes with a silver lining. I was able to travel virtually from my desktop with my fingers, if not with my feet, in the last five months. And I've attended many more club, district, and region events than I would have considered possible in person. In fact, I think I've met more of you online than I would have otherwise. I have been continued to be amazed by the diversity of our organization. While we come from many races, cultures, ethnicities, religions, and nations, at heart, we are united as one family under the banner of Toastmasters. The color of our skin or our gender does not matter as we together continue on our journey of growth and development. As individuals, we all want to be successful. The year ahead will continue to be challenging, but we can achieve all we want if we continue to remain positive in our outlook, steadfast in our focus, and committed to our achievement. If we let go of our self-doubts, be fearless, follow our passion with dedication, we can truly become the leaders we want to. But Toastmasters is truly where leaders are made. Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Mr. Immediate Past International President Deepak Menon. Doesn't that have a golden ring to it? Absolutely. Now let's welcome our 2020-2021 Toastmasters International President, Richard E. Peck. But would you like some personal information on Richard before he speaks to you? I think so. You may ask, where did you get that personal information? On a very private person. Well, from his lovely wife, Betty Ann, of course. Richard and Betty Ann Peck live in a beautiful Victorian home in Seymour, Connecticut, with their two dogs, Princess Charlotte and Indy, short for Indianapolis. Betty Ann tells me that Richard single-handedly restored their nine-room Victorian home. I bet Betty Ann had at least some design advice as a part of that restoration. But needless to say, apparently Richard did the heavy lifting. Now, 
Betty Ann has been designing kitchens for years. And by the way, had a hand in our CEO's new home kitchen, as well as, of course, the kitchen in their beautiful Victorian home. But what is even more interesting is that that's how Betty Ann and Richard met. Betty Ann designed Richard's kitchen in 1998. Richard loves to cook and he also is an accomplished baker. So you say, are these all of his talents? Absolutely not. He worked for 30 years for AT&T in their network support division as a senior member of that division. Project manager, engineer, chef, baker. Sounds like a winning combination to me. But let's dig even deeper. Richard is competitive. Did you know that he is a race car driver? He owns a 1963 front engine, nostalgic dragster. Now, what Betty Ann told me about this is that in this model, the engine literally sits in the lap of the driver. Now, in later models, they put the engine behind the driver. Much safer, don't you think? But oh no, Richard has the 1963 model. So let's just say that our incoming president is daring. Is there anything else you should know about our incoming president? Absolutely. Richard believes in the member. His leadership style is about how the member can achieve more through Toastmasters. He carries Toastmasters core value coins in his pocket and delights in giving them to members. And of course, Richard lives by these core values. One final touch point about Richard that's very special to me. When my husband was dying of cancer, Richard came to me, comforted me, and told me about his challenge with cancer. Our president is determined, driven, and dauntless. Are these qualities that you want in your international president? They certainly are qualities I want in mine. And now we are so fortunate to welcome our newly incoming international president for the 2020-2021 Toastmasters year, Richard E. Peck. Thank you, Lark. My fellow Toastmasters, family and friends, it feels odd to be talking to you from my home in Connecticut and not in the same room as you, where together we would be sharing in the celebration of your successes and feeling the electricity in the room. I have deeply missed seeing each and every one of you over these past few months. This global pandemic has challenged us, but we have shown that we can overcome and will continue to do so. We have proven that we do not have to be in the same room to be united, to encourage each other, to succeed, and to celebrate together. It has been said, it's not the destination, it's the journey. What a journey it has been to get to this destination in leadership. From a battle with cancer to stepping into this role in the midst of a global pandemic, this journey has been anything but a straight line. Yet despite the battle and the pandemic, there have been many great hours along this road. I have gained wisdom from the good times, the adversity, and the people who have supported me along the way. The greatest support has come from my wife, Betty Ann, who has stood by my side throughout, providing encouragement, ear-piercing cheers, and shedding tears along the way. It has indeed been a journey. My Toastmasters journey began when I attended my first Toastmasters meeting, Nutmeg Toastmasters, back in 2006. I was amazed by how supportive and encouraging everyone was. 
There was a lightheartedness wrapped around the seriousness of conducting a quality meeting. I knew right away that I was going to join, which made several members incredibly happy. You see, my joining allowed the club to become distinguished, which made the members of the club happy. And with this, the area became distinguished. Oh, by the way, the area director was a member of the club. I can also remember my icebreaker speech, which was titled, Keeping My Dreams in Scale. In it, I talked about the need to dream big, but to also take realistic approaches to achieving those dreams. I can honestly say that when I joined Toastmasters, becoming the international president was not even a thought let alone a dream. We are truly a transformative organization. As immediate past international president Menon passes the international president's gavel to me, he does so in a time of great challenge and uncertainty, both of which he faced gallantly. When each of us takes on a new leadership role, we look forward to the excitement. We look forward to facing the challenges that will ultimately arise. And we look forward the opportunity to stretch our skills. The 2020-2021 Toastmasters year is going to be exciting, it's going to be challenging, and we will need to stretch our skills. We do not know what the future brings. We do not know if or when we will be able to return to what we know as normal. For us to succeed together, we will need to look at things a little differently, consider new approaches, innovate, and move forward while staying true to our mission. Each of us will need to step into the unknown. As a result of the challenges and uncertainty that we have faced as individuals and organizationally, our members have had to become stronger, creative, and more resilient, finding ways to overcome the obstacles of meeting in person and keeping members engaged. Our members have come to rely on each other in new and different ways. We have learned that social distancing does not mean being antisocial. We have become a stronger Toastmasters society. Now, more than ever, our members and our organization need dedicated and engaged leaders at all levels to help guide our members, our clubs, our districts, and our organization through these changing times. Our founder, Dr. Ralph Smedley stated that we learn best in times of enjoyment. It is also true that we experience great growth through challenge. The Toastmasters journey illustrates the power of this growth. Many of our members join because they fear public speaking. They have grown because they have made it through the toughest experiences. Giving speeches in front of a room one speech at a time. Throughout this coming year, we will need to work and grow together as we run toward the challenges and not away from them. President John F. Kennedy once said, change is the law of life. And those who only look to the past or present are certain to miss the future. We need to face change bravely. We need to break away from doing things the way we have always done them and instead do things that set us apart from the rest and put us on the cutting edge of communication and leadership training and delivery. We need to be willing to try new things. We need to be innovative in our approach. We cannot be afraid to do so. If we are afraid to try new things because we are afraid that we will fail, then we've already failed. If we try, even if the results are not what we hoped for, and we learn from the experience, that is not failure. We take what we learned and use it to move forward. Organizationally, we need to continue to be agile and able to respond quickly to meet the needs of our members. During this global pandemic, both the board and our members have shown that they can do so. When the pandemic finally subsides, we cannot revert to business as usual. To the current and future leaders in the audience, being a leader is not about being the center of attention, it is about being the epicenter of action. The actions that you take and encourage others to take 
will cause the ripple effect of change throughout your clubs, your district, and our organization. I ask each of you for your support and patience as we make decisions to move our organization forward and look for ways to better serve you, the members. We may not always get it right, but I guarantee you that we are always trying our best. Any change will ultimately lead to the question, why? And we will need to do a better job of answering that question. I have been asked what the future of Toastmasters looks like a year from now, five years from now. To be honest, I don't have an answer, and I don't believe that anyone does. It is difficult, if not impossible, to predict the future, but we can chart a course towards it. The chapter on this historic Toastmasters year has just begun to be written, while the chapter on COVID-19 has yet to be closed. However, as an organization, I believe that we will come out of this current situation wiser. Our members will come out of this as a more closely knit community. And there will be a greater realization that the borders between us, real or imagined, can be overcome with just a little ingenuity. I also believe that our members are becoming more culturally aware through their ability to join club meetings around the world. In the years to come, we will look back on the decisions we made during these times and know that we rose to the challenge, that we put our members first, and that we faced the unknown and stood strong. Many of you may be asking why I've been sitting in front of the race car during this address. For those of you who aren't aware, I am a professionally licensed race car driver, and I've learned a lot about leadership sitting in that driver's seat. Skills that will prove extremely valuable during the coming year. I have learned the importance of trust and respect, the value of team building and teamwork, and the need to focus and the ability to react quickly and smartly. As a driver, my responsibility is to steer the car towards the finish line and to react as necessary to ensure that it stays on track. As your international president, my responsibility is to steer our organization towards its future and to work with the CEO and the board to make the necessary changes to keep us on track to reach that future. With every member working together as a team of one, helping each other reach our personal, professional, and organizational goals, we will cross the finish line victorious as we race down the track that are known as the 2020-2021 Toastmasters year. Douglas MacArthur once said that a true leader has the confidence to stand alone, the courage to make tough decisions, and the compassion to listen to the needs of others. He does not set out to be a leader, but becomes one by the equality of his actions and the integrity of his intent. This is also how I view a leader and are the expectations that I set for myself as I accept the responsibilities of being your Toastmasters International President. This is also what you can expect of me, and I will not let you down. I look forward to serving and working with you during the coming Toastmasters year and witnessing your growth and your success. The future is ours, and our future is now. Thank you. Back to you, past International President Doley. Thank you, Mr. International President. I have full confidence that you will steer our organization toward its envisioned future, and that when we cross the finish line of 2020-2021, we will be a stronger organization because of your leadership at the epicenter of action. And now, as a part of our celebration, we honor the home clubs of the international president with a banner that we will deliver to the club presidents for them to proudly display at their club meetings and at other events. The two Toastmasters clubs of our international president are the Nutmeg Club in Woodbridge, Connecticut, United States 
and the Park City Toastmasters of Stratford, Connecticut, United States. Congratulations to these clubs and display the banners proudly. And now I welcome back our immediate past Toastmasters International President, Deepak Menon. For all of us, wherever we are in this world, 2020 has been a difficult year. Our lives have changed in significant ways and we've been faced with difficult decisions. Your board of directors has diligently endeavored to make the right decision. In May, we announced that we would need to postpone the 2020 International Convention that was scheduled to be held in Paris. Since that time, much has happened, yet much about the future remains unknown, especially related to travel and large meetings. This uncertainty, in addition to our existing contractual obligations, has resulted in us extending the postponement of the International Convention in Paris. We now anticipate having the 2021 International Convention in Nashville, Tennessee as originally anticipated and in Paris, France in 2022. We appreciate our members' patience with this ever-evolving situation. Thank you, Mr. Immediate Past International President. We are grateful to all of you for facing the challenges of our 2019-2020 Toastmasters year. And we are thrilled that today you have celebrated the beginning of the 2020-2021 Toastmasters year with us at this virtual convention. We close our inaugural celebration and our 2020 virtual convention with a special message for our Toastmasters International President, Richard E. Peck. Bye everyone, enjoy.
you're not done with me yet. And you thought you were. So we are experiencing technical difficulties. Have you ever experienced technical difficulties before? I'm sure not, right? Wrong. We are experiencing some technical difficulties. We are still trying to get the golden video special treat for Richard that many, many people around the world participated in. So I want you to go back to the website later if we're not able to produce it soon and view this video. You will love it. It is in honor of our 2020, 2021 Toastmasters International President, Richard E. Peck and will be worth your viewing now or later. Bye, everyone. You will enjoy it when it comes up. Good night, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are.
have to remember it as a minister of the Supreme Court in Supreme Court says our hearts of congratulations. Because we've known each other from the old days of the days. My heart of congratulations to you as well. So we wish you good luck for this coming year and we look forward to working with you. Congratulations and welcome to our new International President, Frederick Sector of Peace and Great Gates in the United States, Eastern Pennsylvania, Southern Pennsylvania University. Welcome to the Cardinal Society Network, the Citizen of Texas. We can always be our new Cardinal President for 2020-21. This week is from District 41. Welcome to Western Canada, specifically Southern Saskatchewan and Southern Alberta. Thank you. 
500 with life success. Richard Peck, welcome to your year. Congratulations, Richard Peck, international president. I have named you from Brazil, District 111. This is from District 151. Well, I want to wish Richard Peck a huge congratulations for setting to the role as international president. Hi, Richard. Meeting some Cape Town celebrities. We are so excited to see you step into this international leadership role. You are the right leader for the right time in our history. And I know that you've got the insights, you've got the courage, and you have the experience that we need to take us where we are now into the future. We get to support you with this Congratulations on becoming the new international president for South Southeast International. I am so honored, blessed, and yes, lucky to work with you this year, and I can't wait to see where this year takes us. We love you. Bye. Yes, 
Congratulations, Richard Peck, International President. Felicitations, Richard Peck, International President from District 96 in Vancouver, Canada. It is a real joy and pleasure for me to congratulate you on achieving International President of Philippines. It's been a joy to watch you over the last few years doing presentation after presentation on the stage at the conference. I'm really sorry we don't get to see you this year in Paris live doing it, but in the meantime, I look forward to a great future with that album. Thank you, Rich. You know, you have said it twice. There is one thing I know for sure, and that is that you, Richard, will serve on this with integrity, respect, and excellence. And you all have to. Congratulations, you're next. 